Greetings, wanderer, and welcome to the port of Firefs. Acting as a port for Athens, Firefs welcomed merchants, goods, and travelers from all over the world. It was a central part of Athens' economy, but it was also fortified enough to protect the city's considerable fleet. When you finish exploring the port, find me, and we will talk further. Piraeus, a peninsula southwest of Athens, became the city's main port after the politician Themistocles encouraged the development of its natural harbors. These developments led to the gradual abandonment of the older harbor of Phaleron. Piraeus's fortifications were further developed by Cimon and Pericles, along with the long walls, which ensured goods could still be moved during sieges. Piraeus was divided into three main sectors, the military port, the emporion, and the residential area. By the 5th century BCE, it had become not only Athens' naval headquarters, but also the mercantile center of the Mediterranean. Piraeus's development during the 5th century BCE attracted a large population. Many craftsmen, merchants, bankers, sailors, and ship owners moved to the port in great numbers. The population was a mix of Greek citizens, foreign visitors, and immigrants known as metics. The variety of the port's inhabitants gave Piraeus a cosmopolitan atmosphere. Most of the residents were involved in trade, but others worked on shipbuilding or in larger scale industries like shield factories. Piraeus's commercial focus offered many opportunities for those seeking to increase their wealth and status. One such rags to riches tale is that of Passion, a slave who eventually became a citizen and earned a fortune thanks to his bank and his shield factory. was a demi, or district, of Attica. Because of its size, function, and varied population, it had a much more complicated administrative structure than other deems. Above all, Piraeus was closely monitored and controlled by the Athenian assembly due to its importance to the city. Within the port, there were two separate categories of trade. International trade, which took place in the Emporion, and retail trade, which was managed by Kapaloi in Piraeus's Agora. The Emporion was a commercial port dedicated to trading goods from overseas. All international transactions were required to be made within its limits and needed to be exclusively wholesale. Elected magistrates managed all business and laws in the port. Meanwhile, port authorities known as Epimelites oversaw trade and took care of the regulation of prices. This was an especially crucial duty as the amount of supplies and goods could fluctuate wildly 
based on factors like bad harvests or lost cargo. Common products sold in the Emporion included vegetables, fruits, fish, leather, timber, marble, metal, weapons, and ceramics. According to Hermippos, Athens was also wealthy enough to afford the finest goods from all over the world, including figs from Rhodes, almonds from Thassos, oil from Samos, and wine from Chios. Taxes were collected on all merchandise that came into the Emporion, which provided Athens with a major source of income. After arriving in the Emporion, merchants set up samples of their goods in a display area called the Deigma. This was where citizens and foreigners gathered to officially make their deals. And almost all merchandise that came into the Emporion was traded within the area. The Deigma was under constant supervision by magistrates who negotiated price control with the importers. They would occasionally give special privileges to those who agreed to sell at lower prices. These privileges ranged from tax exemptions to specially reserved seating in the theater. Piraeus was a deem, and as such, was supervised by a magistrate called the Demarchos. While most Demarchoi were chosen locally within their deem, Piraeus was appointed directly by Athens, so the city could better monitor its commercial interests. In fact, matters regarding the Emporion, the military harbor, and the grain trade were regularly debated and decided by the Athenian assembly. Transactions within the Piraeus were supervised by metronomoi. These were magistrates responsible for keeping track of weights and measures. They made sure merchants' measurements were always accurate to prevent bad deals and scams. Even though Piraeus would eventually develop into a city in its own right, it always remained under the control of Athens. commercial tax of 2%, or a pentecost, was placed on all cargo entering and leaving Piraeus. The tax was collected by a group of five people called Pentecostologoi. According to Andocides, this position could be bought for the hefty sum of 30 talents, or 180,000 drachmae. However, most of these officials made a profit of up to six talents, making the job very lucrative. While merchants were responsible for setting the value of their goods, Pentecosta Logoi had the power to challenge the value if they saw fit. Furthermore, merchants were required to register with these officials before they could transport, display, and sell their goods. Overall, this system provided Piraeus, and by extension Athens, with a tremendous amount of money.
the sale of grain was overseen by special magistrates called sitophilikes. Since some Greek cities had a grain deficiency and relied heavily on imports, these officials were extremely important. Their duties encompassed all aspects of grain commerce, including price control and profit margins, to ensure Athens remained well-fed. This is no surprise. Grain was so important to Athens that two-thirds of all stocks were required to be transported and sold at the city's agora by law. According to Demosthenes, the significance of the Sitophilikes was such that if they failed in their duties, they faced the death penalty. The Emporion operated on a foundation of credit and loans. Overseas commerce was handled by two types of tradespeople. Emporoi transported cargo in borrowed ships, while Naukloroi were ship owners who moved goods on their own vessels. Elsewhere in the Emporion were bankers and accountants who arranged loans and kept track of incoming and outgoing ships. Emporoi and Naukloroi financed their maritime voyages with these loans, which often had a high interest rate due to the dangers of sea travel. Emporoi used the loans to pay for both the cargo and the right to a ship, while Naukloroi only had to pay for their crew. Loans and interest were repaid upon a ship's return to port. However, in the event of a catastrophe such as a shipwreck, the merchant and ship owner were released from their obligations and the losses were transferred to the lender. You've returned. I hope you enjoyed your stroll through the fort. Piraeus was important to Athens' commercial interests, but it eventually came into its own as a vibrant and bustling port. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. As you wish, thank you for visiting. 